Good evening, good evening, everyone. It is so lovely to be back here, back on the mat, back in action, back and doing yoga with you guys. It has been a very upsy-daisy kind of month, this month with a lot of traveling, a lot of celebrating, and a lot of uh, life happening. So thank you for being patient with me. I'm going to run through a couple of updates quickly before we get going. Firstly, next week, next Friday evening, 5th of November, I'll be offering a five koshas workshop. So for those of you who have been doing yoga for a while or are yoga teachers, you'll know that we are made up of five sheets, five koshas. Um, starting with the physical, going in and in and in and in until we reach the bliss sheep central consciousness um so that i'll be incorporating the five sheets into how we need to nurture them maintain them and doing that so that we can age gracefully because now that i'm turning 40 it's all about aging gracefully so we will be looking at that in conjunction with that the free workshops that i'm doing is the year-long annual course that I've set up, Shifting from Chaos to Rhythm. It's a beautiful course, it's absolutely lovely. I've been doing the work myself, I'm still continuously doing the work. And with this work, we are creating structures in place. It's like creating a nice riverbed and you're creating a structure in place so that you can flow more easily with whatever comes up and with whatever happens in life. Often when we have that structure, then flow happens spontaneously. We need a structure of a direction that we want to be going in. When we've got that, then we can easily navigate life. So if you want more information on that course, let me know. I can email you an info pack. There's loads in there for you to read about, or we can have a chat, either or. It is definitely something I would consider would suggest that you consider looking into for investing in yourself, for your own health, because literally what else do we have if we don't have full health for ourselves? So since it is just me here tonight, I think that's probably because there's been so much disruption this month. I am going to share with you pretty much what my morning practices, yoga practices look like for about half an hour every morning, okay, not every morning, but most mornings than not, I'll try to do a yoga practice. It incorporates a few uh, warm-up exercises, movements, it incorporates salute to the sun, and then 10 minutes of just breathing and um, meditation. So I thought I would share this with you so that you've got it on record. And if you are just needing something easy to follow every morning, then you can literally just place play. So we will get started. Make sure you're sitting comfortably. I like to sit on a hard block. And for the first 10 minutes, I kind of warm up and center. So I'll always start with sitting comfortably, checking in with the body. How am I feeling? So the recording is now happening in the evening, but usually I'll check in in the morning and be like, you know, Nina, how's it going this morning? Did you have a good night's sleep? Are you feeling well rested? Is the energy high or low? Is there high motivation, low motivation? Is the body already feeling quite open or is it feeling a little sluggish? And that'll just guide me through the postures I do and choose. And once you've settled into connecting and checking in with how you feel, you know, start with a few neck releases. So as you exhale, release the chin down to your chest. As you inhale, bring your head back to neutral. Twice more. I love doing neck releases. It's an area of tension for me, quite a bit of tension for me. So doing these in the morning, slows things down, helps me really align. Keep the chin down, draw it along your left collarbone to the left, checking in to see how the leg is feeling on the sides. Exhale back to the center. 
And then inhale along your right collarbone to the right, and over that shoulder if it works. Exhaling back to the center. And I never, ever, ever force in the morning. In the morning, I just allow, actually, I never, ever force ever. <laughs> I really just allow my head, my neck to move as far as it's comfortable. I'm never forcing, pushing, straining. It's kind of like, ah, oh, there's a little bit of a niggle. Okay, I'm just going to stop and pause there and then release again. I'm not pushing through any pain. It's really not going to be supportive. It's not going to be nurturing to me. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be supportive or nurturing to you either. So once you've done about three to each side, dynamically end with the head in the center. Inhale, come your back up. And then do a couple of shoulder circles. Inhaling as the shoulders come up and back. Exhaling down and around. And when you do your morning practice, you know, if you've got your, your pets around, your kids around, your partner around, that's absolutely fine. Change direction. It doesn't, it's nice when it can be something meditative and where you're able to connect more with the universe, with spirit, with deeply with yourself. But if that's not your reality at the moment, then just go with it, but rather be doing something than not. All right. From there, I'll often change the cross of my legs. I'll hold onto the shins and do a few rounds of the cat stretch. So as I inhale, I open up. As I exhale, I round and lean back. Inhale, walking forwards and opening. Exhaling, rounding and leaning back. And continuing like this. Moving easily and comfortably, finding that rhythm. And some days the movement may be a little faster, other days it may be a little slower. Taking time to wake up the spine. There we go. And then back to the center. Placing the right hand onto the mat, inhale, reaching that left arm up. And as you exhale, taking that breath, opening up the side body. And if I'm feeling really stiff or stagnant and I can feel like, ah, you know, I just need to, to kind of massage or rub a little down the side, then, then I do that and go for it. So kind of make it your own. If you feel it needs to be of more of a dynamic movement, then let it be a dynamic movement. On an inhalation, come back up, exhale, release. And then other side, inhale, reaching the left arm up, the right arm up, exhale, lean over to the left. And again, you might find that by just rubbing, it's kind of like you, you're moving the energy. You're also draining the lymph. Maybe it's right up into that arm and that elbow. And in the mornings, when you, when you do rub and connect, it's kind of like, it's a lovely way to also wake up the body. Kind of connecting, getting into the physical, exhaling, releasing, and release. So the next movement I love to do, because it seems to warm up the spine beautifully, and it's a practice I learned from Donna Fari. She's an Australian yoga teacher. And we've done a lot of the work before, um, of her work before we, where we do the constructive rest pose um, and a few other variations of the bridge. But for this, you want to have your legs about mat, kind of mat width apart, kind of in a V. I'm using two mats here just so that it's a bit easier. You're going to have the forehead on the mat and you're going to have your hands like in a cactus-like position. And what happens is that you're going to inhale and you're going to lift up a little bit into a cobra. You're going to work your right foot, your big toe, towards that left knee. And you're going to look over your right shoulder. And then from there, you're going to take your big toe and you're kind of pushing it along the mat, out to the side again, as you bring yourself back to the center. So as you exhale, the other leg comes in, the big toe kind of comes, or the foot comes towards your knee. You're looking over your left shoulder now. And then as you release, you press that kind of toe, foot into the mat, and you come back to the center. So you exhale and you're squeezing into the one side, 
And as you inhale, you're coming back again. Exhaling over to the side. And I do this for quite a while, this practice. And, you know, if you're watching the recording a couple of times, once you've got this movement, it's very, very easy. So you don't need to do it kind of as slowly. But you're coming back to the center as you exhale, you're bringing your big toe in towards your knee. And then you're pushing that, you're sliding that big toe along the mat out to that original position as you bring yourself back in again. And you'll probably find that as the spine warms up, you can go a little bit deeper into that sideward movement. You might find that you lift up a little bit higher into a cobra-like position. You can feel right into the abdominal area, kind of those muscles waking up and warming up. It's quite a different feeling doing this in the evening when the body is warm compared to in the morning. So, in the, so as deeply as I'm working now, that's never what it feels like in the morning. When I'm doing it in the morning, I'm probably somewhere down here and like that. So you also have to see for yourself how you don't try to push yourself up into a cobra position and use your arms and hands. You're really just allowing this movement to warm you up. And you can continue with that. But if you would like a slightly deeper one, which takes you a little further, you're going to bring your elbows forwards. So you're coming up more into a sphinx-like position. You're going to feed your right arm underneath. You're going to swoop the top arm up and over, kind of still reaching into the fingers, reaching through the legs. So there's a bit of a crisscross there. And then you kind of like back onto your tummy. And then the opposite arm goes through. You reach into your toes, the opposite arm opens up. And again, you get that lovely, lovely stretch through the arm, the shoulder, the chest, the bust area. And then you kind of like this allow yourself to flip back to the center. And again, you continue moving. You either just do the previous movement a little longer, or if you feel the body is quite warm, then um, or quite comfortable, especially if you've been doing yoga or movement every morning, then usually the body is, is quite uh, ready and easy mobile to kind of get around, move around. All right, once you've done an even amount, on both sides. Let's do one more here so we are nicely balanced. I come back to the center and then I push up into a child's pose to release and bring everything back into neutral, back into balance. And slowly. Coming up. If you feel you need to do a few rounds of a cat stretch or a downward dog, you can do so. When you're ready to come up, do so nice and slowly. And then for about 10 minutes or so, I do a few rounds of Surya Namaskar. So we'll go through Salute to the Sun together. And then you can, you're welcome to go at it at your own pace, at your own rhythm. So starting at the front of your mat, I have to adapt just a little because I've got a nice, actually I can turn this way around, that should be a problem, that should be a lot easier. All right, so starting at the front of your mat, bringing the palms of your hands to your heart center. As you inhale, you need to reach the arms forwards and up. As you exhale, extend forwards and down. Now, you most probably, especially if it's early in the morning, you to need to bend your knees. Inhaling, stepping your right leg back, opening up your chest. Taking the left leg back, pause, holding the brakes, place it through your heels. Engage the abdominals as you exhale, knees to the mat. And I actually start off, to be honest, with a few child's poses. So I will do a child's pose, a variation of the salute to the sun. Then I'll come into a cat stretch. Then I'll push up and back into a downward dog. Knees bent, spine long, always focusing on keeping the length of the spine, never working into straightening the legs first thing off in the morning. Or if I inhale, right leg steps forward. Exhale, left leg steps forward. Inhale, reaching forwards and up. Exhaling, hands to the heart center. 
Other side, inhaling, reaching arms forwards and up. Exhaling, extending forwards and down. Inhale, lift leg steps back. Holding the breath as the right goes back. Exhale into a child's pose. Inhale into a calf stretch. Exhale into your downward dog. Inhale, left leg forwards. Exhaling, right leg forwards. Inhaling, use your squats to come up. Nice, strong legs. Exhale, hands to your heart center, monkey. I'll do one more like that. Inhaling, reaching the arms forwards and up. Exhale, extend forwards and down. Inhale, reaching your right foot back. Holding your breath as the left leg steps back. And as you exhale, knees to the mat, buttocks to your heels, forehead to the mat. Inhale into your cap stretch. Exhale into the downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right leg forward. If it doesn't get there in one go, help it forwards with your hand. Exhale, left leg comes forward. Bend your knees, drop the buttocks. Use your squat, use the strength in your legs to lift you up. Hands to your heart center. Same thing, other side, inhaling, reaching forwards now. Exhaling, forwards and down. Inhale, left leg steps back. Holding the breath as the right goes back. Exhaling, coming down into a child's pose. Inhale into a cat stretch. Exhale, down the dog. Inhale, left leg steps through. Exhaling, right follows. Again, your squat to come up. Exhaling, hands to your heart center. Now, on the days where I'm feeling really stiff, really tired, and things are kind of not as smooth and as functioning as I would like them to be, then that's the sequence that I'll do for five, ten minutes, however long I feel. When I feel that I'm warmed up enough and my body feels strong and happy, then I'll go into the traditional version. So you choose where you are at this morning or this time. Inhaling as you come up. Exhaling forwards and down. Inhale, right leg steps back. Hold the breath as the left goes back. And now as you exhale, knees to the mat. Send the buttocks up so that you look like a little bit of a caterpillar and bring your chest down between your hands. Bring the chin to the mat. On an inhalation, release the feet. Inhale, scoot forwards into a cobra. You're literally only lifting yourself as far up as your hands will allow, you're not pushing into your hands into your cobra. You're really working into strengthening the back muscles and the abdominals. Then from there, you're going to engage the abdominals, lower a little, and push up and back into the down dog. If you can do that in one fine swooping movement, do so. But um, if you're like me and you don't have the upper body strength, then you make it into two or three Elegant movements. Exhale, hands to the heart center. And again, other side, inhale, arms raised. The exhalation, you come forwards and down. Inhale, the left leg steps back. Pausing, holding the breath. Exhale, little caterpillar, knees, chest, chin. Inhaling, coming forwards and up. Exhale, push up and back. Inhale, left leg steps through. Exhaling, right leg follows. Inhaling as we come up. Exhaling, really super. Two more rounds. Inhaling. Nice, smooth, long inhalation. Pause as you step back and exhale as you release down, down, slowly, slowly, slowly. Let those arm muscles work. Inhale into your cobra. Long, full press, press down to the top of your feet. Exhale, engage the abdominals elegantly, pushing up and back into a downward dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward. If it doesn't get there in one go, help it with your hand. Exhale, left. Inhale, coming up easily. Exhale, releasing. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Left leg. 
and right. Exhaling, caterpillar. Inhaling. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, left leg. Exhaling, right. Inhaling, going all the way out. Exhaling, really super. So you should already start to feel that the body is getting a little warmer. There's movement, there's kind of um, warmth and heat form. Let's do another round. We'll work with the Sanskrit, inhaling, drawing the arms up, exhaling, Uttanasana, inhaling, Asha Sanchalasana, holding the breath, Chaturanga Dandasana, exhaling, Ashtanga Namaskar, inhaling, Ujjanasana, exhaling, Padumukhasvanasana, Inhaling, Ashva Sanchalasana. Exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhaling, Utkatasana. Exhaling, Anjali Mudra. Other side, inhaling, drawing the arms up. Exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhaling, Ashva Sanchalasana. Holding the breath, Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhaling, Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhaling, Bhujangasana. Exhaling, Abhimukhasvanasana. Inhaling, Ashvasanchalasana. Exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhaling, Utkatasana. Exhaling. Namaste, bring the hands into Anjali Mudra at the heart center. Super. So that's all we'll be doing for today. Normally I'll do um, about 10 minutes worth. So depending on how fast it is, it's maybe around nine, maybe eight, eight, between eight and 10 rounds of Surya Namaskar. Um, let me just unplug this. Then what? I do is I sit comfortably. This is usually where Carter actually comes and joins. He just comes and lies in front of me and joins in with the meditation. Carter is our dog. And he, that's his favorite thing to, to be doing. All right, so we'll take it into a little bit of a meditation, pranayama practice. I'm going to put my timer on. I usually just use the timer on my phone and I do like 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And that's it. And it goes really, really fast. So starting off, I follow the breath. Following the breath in and out. And letting it settle again. So just noticing. quality of the breath. Noticing my heartbeat. And then one of the practices, Pranayama practices that I really love doing, that I really am getting into at the moment, is Nadi Shodhana, the alternate nostril breath. So if you know it, you can go into it. If you don't know it, just focus on following the breath in and out. And so if you're familiar with Nadi Shodhana, you need to start off, and I do it kind of the other way because it's in the morning. So I'll start off by Inhaling through the right nostril. Exhaling through the left. Inhaling through the left. Exhaling through the right. In through the right. Out through the left. In through the left. Out through the right. 
And you continue in your own time now, a few more rounds. Moving easily from one side to the other. You'll find that as you focus on this practice that the breath becomes a little slower. The practice becomes a little slower. And there's really no rush and there's no goal. It's just to enjoy. And to be honest with you, I don't actually have a set amount of breaths or rounds that I'll do. I kind of stop when I feel that my arm gets tired. <laughs> it's probably not the most technical way of doing it. But I realize that when I notice kind of that my arm is getting heavy or tired, then I lose a practice. So when you notice that happening, exhale out through your right nostril and then release your right arm. You can always change the arms when you're doing the practice, but I find that quite disruptive. So I just like to, I'll just finish whenever kind of I feel. So some days it may be three or four rounds, other days it could be 12 or 20 rounds. You making it your own as well. And then thereafter I'll sit quietly. I just follow the breath, following the breath in, following the breath out, following the breath in, following the breath out. And if you need something to focus your mind on, you're going to start counting back from 108. In other words, inhaling 108, exhaling 108, inhaling 107, exhaling 107, inhaling 106. Exhaling 106. So I do that quietly and to myself, and whenever I lose track of where I am, if I get distracted, then I just start at 108 again. You can continue with that now. Try not to allow anything to distract you. Just keep focusing on the breath.
you're extremely distracted where you are, you get distracted, don't get frustrated with yourself. And just return to 180 and start the practice over again. If you're a perfectionist, it can be a difficult or a challenging practice. Give it your best shot. Don't get frustrated. Gently release the practice. Seeing how still the body and the mind have become. Moment to acknowledge three things that you are grateful for. Three things that happened yesterday, three things that have already happened this morning, or whenever you're doing this practice. And then gently release. And that is pretty much how I work my morning practice. There are always some variations here and there, depending on what's going on. Hopefully that has been of some use and some help to you. Hopefully um, it will motivate you to get you going and to, to play around with it and to get on the mat. And literally, if it's just 10 minutes of the neck releases, warm ups that you do, that's absolutely perfect. It doesn't have to be the whole 30 minutes. But if you can get on your mat for five, 10 minutes every morning, your body will be so, so grateful. All right, guys, I hope you're able to join me on Friday for the Five Crochets Workshop. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of information in there, ways to keep us healthy, mobile as we age gracefully. And then for those, again, who are keen to join me on my year-long program, I've got a group starting in November and we've got a group starting in March. So it's not like you have to commit right away, but if you want more information, let me know. I'll give it to you. And you're able to join um, any time in the um, in the course of the three starting times every year. All right, guys, have a beautiful day and look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. Namaste and have a beautiful day. And